Good morning, my gorgeous friends on the internet. As you can see, we have upgraded the setup. We are professional video producers, movie makers right now. Uh, there's still a bit of echo here, so I need to put up some paint, some paint, some posters on the wall to get rid of it so the voices don't bounce back. Other than that, let me know what you think. Let me write it down in the comments. So what I want to talk today about is a few things I learned ever since I started programming and the mistakes I did. Okay, so mistakes and what we learned in the end. That's what I want to cover. So sit back, enjoy it. This is going to be a talking video. I know a few of you like this. So let's get started. I started learning programming when I was like 16. All right. And the experience was actually tragic and I stopped for years. But anyway, here's how it started. So this was seven, eight years back ago. One of my passions was playing games. And, you know, first thought was, hey, why shouldn't I not make games for a living and I can make money from it? Okay, so here's the first mistake I did. I wanted to learn game development and I went on Google, searched how to do game development tutorial, okay? That's what I did. And obviously I just clicked on the first link, it was a YouTube video and, and I was like, hey, that's what I need to do. But the mistake was that it was a learn how to create a game engine in C++ and it was like 10 hours long. So as you can imagine, 17, 17 year old dev ed, bad at math, bad at life, is trying to learn C++ for the first time. Didn't go well, I still have nightmares. So this was so incredibly demotivating once I went through it that I stopped altogether and I thought programming was just way too hard for me and I would never pursue it in my life. So what did we learn from this? Over the years when I started programming again, I learned how to find the things that I need, things that work for me and I just click on the first thing and be like, oh, that's the only way to do it. All right, later on, uh, basically when you start programming and you start getting better at it, you learn how to find what you need and learn what you need very quickly. Uh, that's one of the skills uh, that are, is very advantageous for you, right? Because uh, even like senior developers and programmers, what they're really good at is finding the answers that they need, even though they don't know it. An amateur uh, programmer would have a very tough time and would just probably just try to think about the solution. If they don't know, they would just give up or they would Google a bit and give up. Um, so that's one big thing I learned. Um, so after I let go and I don't know what happened a few years when I started college, I, I really didn't like college and I wasn't doing what I liked. So I thought I would give it another shot. So that's when I started researching more and I picked up Unity uh, and that kind of went well with C Sharp. Here's the second mistake that I think a lot of people fall into is being stuck in this tutorial hell. I remember when I started learning web development that I spent a few months just learning HTML and CSS. Now the funny part is I actually didn't build out almost anything. Well, I did build out like a fake YouTube um, HTML with CSS website where I just had a blue, a blue YouTube and I would just put links, embedded YouTube links on it. And that's about it. I was impressed. My mom hated it, but we move on. Uh, so the mentality here is basically what changed for me because we have this thought that the more I watch tutorials, the more information I absorb, the better I get, which is completely false in most cases. For Maybe for some people it works, but for me, it didn't work at all. Learning all of those things is good because you see what's going on. But hey, my attention span and my memory is not that great. So I forget very quickly. And since you never use those things that you learn, it's you don't know how to apply it. So even if I learn something and I understand it, I might not necessarily know how to apply it to my website or to my project. So the, what I learned here is that you should start doing your own stuff. 
I think it's better if you don't know everything, but you start doing things because that way you know, ah, okay, if this fits there and this doesn't work here or, or just learns. Same thing happened with React. I know I just watched a lot of React tutorials and tried to understand state. I would just go to sleep crying in my bed, thinking about state, knowing that there was Redux behind me with just the bat just beating. The third mistake I did was adding these cliche projects in my portfolio. And I know, look at me, I know I'm guilty and you're probably guilty too. You started adding, if you do web development, those to-do list, to-do list, to-do list applications in your project. A weather app, maybe? You have that. You have a weather app in there. Just these basic cliche projects that once you see them, you want to faint like a princess in a Disney movie once it gets kissed by the prince. And it just doesn't look good. It lacks any creativity. It lacks any originality. That's the same thing, I think. I'm very guilty of this. My, this, this is basically how my portfolio looked like at the beginning. To-do list, weather wrap, tic-tac-toe, wow. And another mistake that kind of relates to this whole thing is there's this misconception that you should have a ton of projects, right? You should have 20 websites or 20 games if you develop games, uh, which is not true right then this kind of applies to everything if you produce 30 songs i hit my monitor or 30 paintings and they look like a kid draw it in kindergarten while he was sleeping and the teacher would not let him sleep what so what i'm trying to say is rather have one good song that's gonna hit hard it's gonna be fire or just have one great game rather than building out 20 tic-tac-toes with different colors and fonts. Okay, so once I started getting good, I felt flexible and comfortable with my skills. I knew how to Google, find the answers to all my questions, build my own projects. This is where we get into the depression zone. I was undervaluing myself a lot. I remember I had to build this freelance, I was freelancing and I had to build out this project for a hotel that didn't even look good. The hotel was trash and they had a trash website building WordPress with a lady with a hat. Okay, it didn't even have anything to do with the hotel. I'm not sure what, what was that website. It just had a link with the hotel and just the lady with a hat just doing a shaman. It was a Michael Jackson imitation. I believe that's copyright as well. That's not okay. So I was like, yo, that's trash. I will rebuild the website for you for free. Don't kill me. I know I did it for free. That's not even the worst part yet. I built out the website for free. I designed the website for free. And I even personally went to take pictures of each bed, each room and everything. And I made the website and they didn't even put up the website. It's still the lady with the hat. Okay, I'm getting towards the end. I wanted to cover two more that I think are important. One might not be so obvious. I see a lot of people focusing very specifically on one technology. And what we learned throughout the years is that technology changes at a very fast pace. And thankfully I caught this early on. Uh, just to give an example, if you start learning Angular, which is a JavaScript framework, a few years ago, you know how much things changed and people jumped to Angular too. Then it was that big debacle of people moving away because they don't trust Google anymore, so they switched to React and the job market kind of changed a lot. So if you spend a lot of time learning one specific thing, one specific technology and putting all your eggs in the basket, is that the expression? I believe that's the expression. If you put the eggs in the, in the toilet, then, okay, then that might not be so good because you don't know how to do anything else. And I know there's a lot of controversy, controversy between this 
people telling you that you should master one specific thing, you should know multiple things, uh, because that's, that's not that valuable. And I don't think that's true. I think if you're flexible and you can switch to different, um, different technologies very easily, I think that's more valuable than anything. Even though, even when the job market starts changing or you want to do freelancing or something on your free time, I think having that flexibility and kind of learning different things in different areas, even if it's not super, you're not a master at those specific things, just kind of knowing how it works will help you immensely in the future. Because, hey, one, one day something might not work anymore and you might have to switch something else and you will have no idea. So I say just be more flexible, be, be loosey-goosey. And last but not least, which I think is the most important thing I learned, is that I know this happens usually when you start programming and learning, you get very excited and that's the only thing you wanna do. And then you find yourself burned out and then you wanna don't do anything anymore. I learned this, I know. I'm cool now, I'm not burned out. What happens is we get lost. We get lost in our lives. We focus too much on that thing. And then we just realize that we're not eating the way we should. We're not spending time with family as much anymore. And that's not good. We lose our other hobbies that we might have found interesting. So. I think it's very important to find a balance. Even if you're working professionally or just doing it for fun, find a balance and try to give more time to the other things that you might not think are important in that moment. And I think that's going to greatly improve the way you live life and your happiness and your level of joy. Trust me, give this a shot. If you've been programming a lot right now, get off your chair, just go outside a bit and just give yourself a stretch, stretch out, breathe a bit, maybe, maybe read a book or start playing the ukulele. Do, do people actually play the ukulele? There you go, hope you enjoy this episode. I still have that viewer project reaction coming up. No, it's been delayed a bit. It's coming on Wednesday, okay? So there we go. And until next time, make sure you put up your headphones to get rid of that buzzing sound in your ear.